Good morning, Alex Cole. How are you doing, my friend? I'm hanging in there, sir. How are you? <laughs> Couple te technical difficulties this morning, February 10th, 2022. For everybody who's watching this on YouTube, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, and also make sure to head over to stockchartstv.com or to uh, your local app store and download the on-demand platform as well. Uh, lots happening in the markets this week, Alex. Uh, certainly yeah. the narrative machine working overtime. Uh, we've got some important CPI data to discuss, interest rates, uh, speculation about Fed rate hikes and all the rest. But first, let's just focus on price and trend. Mm -hmm. uh, what are we looking at on this heat map, Alex? So this is a pure heat map of the go, no go trend of the asset classes. And so you can see this top panel here is equities and we are still in a no-go trend albeit painting weaker pink bars and so we did see that rally this week but still technically in a no-go trend mm -hmm. treasury bond prices are in a strong no-go remember that's different from rates uh, mm -hmm. prices move inversely to rates commodities now are the outperformer and have been for some time they're still in a go trend uh, dollar sort of jumping all over the place. We're seeing a lot of chop as it tries to uh, make up its mind, but it has fallen back into a no-go, as you can see here in this fourth panel. And then don't look now, but Bitcoin actually painting a couple of bars of a go trend. So is that sort of long correction from over 60,000 down to about 30,000? Is that over for Bitcoin? We'll see if the new go trend can take hold. Absolutely. And so as responsible technical analysts, we want to look first uh, from a top-down perspective, looking across all asset classes, just to see what's uh, what's in trend and what's out of trend. As uh, as they say, there's a bull market somewhere. Right now, that's in commodities, and uh, we have yet to see the weight of the evidence uh, push higher for U.S. equities. Uh, but let's dive in yep. to the S and P 500 itself. Um, instead of just looking at price action, let's look at the sectors of the S&P 500 on a relative basis. So not their absolute trend, but their trend relative to the index. So what's outperforming or underperforming the S&P 500 benchmark? Here we see a lot of the usual suspects, Alex. Walk, yeah. walk us through what you're seeing from a sector perspective. Yeah, and I guess that saying there's a bull market somewhere, I thought it was a Jimmy Buffett saying that it's five o'clock somewhere. But yeah, we get the uh, we get the picture. But yeah, it's the usual people here in the middle, the the staples, energy, financials, uh, healthcare as well. The, this is driving sort of the performance is coming from these cyclical sectors, from the value plays. And if we look at things like consumer discretionary here, technology in a strong no-go, communications in a strong no-go, we can really see that that's the, the same as it has been now for several weeks. And the leaders are the more cyclical, more value sectors. Absolutely. And I know uh, next week we're planning to look at uh, some style boxes, looking at right. large cap versus small cap, growth versus value. Uh, we've seen a lot of rotation in this marketplace uh, since the beginning of the year. And a lot of that is being driven, uh, whether we like it or not, around expectations of uh, federal uh, central banker in involvement in hiking rates to stem the threat of inflation. Uh, today was a very important day. I know our watchers this afternoon, uh, Thursday, February 10th, were probably paying attention this morning uh, to the CPI report, which came out. Uh, and we're, we're seeing inflation uh, rising higher on a year over year basis than it has in over 40 years. It was 1982, the last time we had 7.5% inflation. Yeah. Uh, and of course, uh, as technicians like to say, you could grab three economists, put them on a panel, and get 10 different opinions. Uh, we love economists here at GoNoGo -Go Charts, Alex. Uh, there's Absolutely. a lot of information there. But consensus view on uh, on interest, uh, excuse me, on inflation was that we'd be looking at around 7.2%. So the number that was reported this morning, higher than the consensus view, higher than it's been in 40 years. Uh, we're seeing not just food and energy prices jumping, but even core CPI moving. And that all plays out in the in the rates and the yields on U.S. government treasuries. Now, let's tune into the TNX. That's the 10-year government yield. Again, uh, the prices of U.S. Uh, treasury bonds have the flight path of a brick right now, but the yields are, are popping through. Alex, we see that go trend starting January yeah. of 2022. See some range bound consolidation, and here we are today popping up above 2% interest rates on the 10 year. Uh, tell us what you're seeing from a trend perspective on interest rates for uh, government treasuries. 
from a purely technical standpoint, then we are very bullish, right? This is a very strong go chart. We saw, like you said, the go established at the in January. And then after that rally, we did see some sideways movements, some counter trend correction arrows telling us that price may struggle to go higher in the short term. Mm -hmm. But then we would have looked back down here to the oscillator, the go no go oscillator, again, the blend of momentum inputs. And we're going to look as price consolidates or corrects to see whether or not the oscillator can find support at the zero line. That means that all of those inputs that go into the oscillator have not seen any oversold readings. It would go a little bit negative. It would go negative the more oversold readings that we were seeing. And if the go trend is to be strong, we wouldn't expect oversold readings, heavy selling. We'd expect some cooling off, yes, but then for the oscillator to find support at zero, which is exactly what happened. And we saw those green go trend continuation icons towards the end of this consolidation and then right before price popped. And even today, again, going higher still. Mm -hmm. And so a rising interest rate environment uh, tends to be good for uh, the cyclical sectors of the economy. We, we see those historical correlations, things like financials and the energy sector tend to uh, do well, find some tailwinds in that rising rate environment. Here we certainly see uh, a rising rate environment and uh, and moving up to new highs, breaking out of uh, that, that channel there and uh, momentum resurging in the direction of the trend. So yeah. let's take a look then at the S&P 500, the index level, and just see what's happening right uh, at, the, at the higher level of the U.S. equity space, uh, what we're seeing from a trend perspective there, Alex. Yeah, this is an interesting chart of quite a few things to talk about. Uh, I was on Dave Keller's final bar show last week, and we were talking about these, the resistance that might be found in these sort of 45, 50 levels. And we are really testing that again. Um, we'd be uh, much more bullish if we could set a new high, like a new swing high in the, in the short term. But there are some signs from the oscillator breaking into positive territory here that there is something building in terms of momentum to the upside. Now, mm -hmm. remember, the weight of the evidence uh, still is on the side of the no-go. We're seeing these pink bars here. And if uh, we are unable to get above these levels, we may well see price roll over again. So we're looking at the oscillator now. Will it stay above zero? Will it find support? Or will it perhaps crash right back through the zero line? It's going to be very, very important to note. And then one other thing that we want to point out here is, as, as you guys are familiar with go no go charts, you know that we put volume into the oscillator. So this period where volume is turning to the dark blue or the oscillator, I should say, turning to the dark blue, tells us that volume is relatively strong. Now, so this contradicts perhaps a little bit that move into positive territory because we're seeing strong volume on this leg down in the no-go. And then as prices have rallied, uh, corrected against the no-go trend, we're actually seeing the volume now weaken and turn to a lighter aqua color, telling us there's a little bit less uh, market activity as prices reach this resistance level. So this is going to be very interesting to see how it plays out. Absolutely, Alex. And uh, I know that's difficult. Level uh, Uncertainty in the marketplace is never good for investors. And we're right at those levels that we were at last week when you were on Dave's show, The Final Bar. Uh, yeah. Still waiting to see price confirmation. Uh, but from a weight of the evidence perspective, we've got a little bit of conflict between what's happening at the uh, overall trend condition and what's happening with the oscillator. Uh, breaking above zero. So uh, important inflection point. We're going to keep an eye on this. Uh, and for all of our watchers, thank you so much for tuning in this week. Now, within the S&P 500, we got to look under the hood to find what is driving the rally higher and what's pulling things lower. So as we looked at that sector rel map, we saw the financial sector really uh, screaming higher, both on an a, uh, absolute and relative basis against the index Alex, let's turn our eye over to the XLF, the financials sector of the U.S. Uh, equity space, and see what's happening from a trend perspective there. Yeah, so on a daily uh, daily chart, we can see a really strong rally and the XLF racing back to a go trend. So remember, the S&P on that last chat, uh, chart was rallying this week, but still in a no-go. Uh, the financial sector 
raced back into a go, got some positive confirmation from the oscillator of rallying off the zero line. And now we're painting some strong blue go bars as we come up to levels that were a high recently. Now, remember, this is a daily chart. So uh, the longer term picture uh, is worth looking at as well. But this is what we're seeing right now on the daily. Absolutely. Trend coming back in the direction, excuse me, momentum coming back in yeah. the direction of the trend, uh, strengthening to the blue color in the overall trend conditions. But let's zoom out uh, yeah. as, as we're hitting those uh, uh, prior highs, looking at resistance. What does this look like on a weekly basis uh, to your eye, Alex? Yeah. And so it's very, very important. And when we, we talk with clients, it's very, very important to get that long, larger time frame and see where we are in the context of something a little bit bigger. And we've been talking about how important it will be for the weekly chart, the oscillator, to find support, continue to find support at the zero line. So on a weekly chart, obviously, the trend is still in place and we are continuing to hold the zero line. We just this week are rallying off the zero and that's triggering this uh, one more green go trend continuation circle to appear under the price bar. So we've had a whole string of these as prices crept higher really over the past year but the trend still in place on the weekly and the oscillator still finding support at the zero line mm -hmm. makes sense that lending institutions i.e banks uh would do well in a higher rate environment uh they mm -hmm. profit off of uh off that difference in their uh, in their lending practices uh, but Alex, I, I can't help but notice because the chart is so clean and and uh, you, you don't have that analysis paralysis with too many indicators going on. There's an interesting divergence happening between uh, price making new highs yeah. and yeah. the momentum oscillator making lower highs as we uh, as we get to these levels. Uh, from a classical technical perspective, uh, traditional analysis, uh, what does that tell you uh, when you're seeing that kind of divergence? Yeah, of course, you in an ideal uh, world, you would want confirmation from your oscillator uh, when you see price movement going in a certain direction. So what that means is we will want to see higher readings in the oscillator when we get higher readings in price. And if you look back here, as price rallied in the beginning of this trend, the oscillator readings remained high. Even when we made a new high here, the oscillator raced up and made another high as well. So this is the first time now where price has crept higher about a month ago and the oscillator has made a lower high. So that is a, a warning sign. But we also do find that in strong trends, there are cases of divergence or mul you know, multiple times before a trend reversal. So a derivative of what we're seeing on price, price trend still in place. But yes, uh, somewhat of a concern for the health of the trend. Absolutely. Now, for all of our uh, research subscribers, Monday morning pre-market, uh, we sent out the flight path newsletter review, top-down perspective, uh, and that included a few trade ideas. Within the financial space, uh, we were looking at Bank of America, BAC, as, uh, as a single security idea that's, that's really benefiting from this overall financial sector trend. We know a, a rising tide lifts all ships, thanks to uh, President Kennedy uh, for famous quotes like that. Uh, we, we certainly see that uh, investors piling into financials in the wake of this rising rate environment. Uh, what do you see from a trend perspective here on the Bank of America chart? Yeah, and um, we, we sent this out on Monday. We were, I think, looking at this squeeze, which was important as well. We were talking about how the oscillators riding the zero line here, and we would want to see in which direction it breaks. And if this go trend is to stay in place, we'd hope to see it break to the upside. So I think Monday here was actually when it did break out of the squeeze to the upside and we got that go trend continuation icon on the chart. And then we've since rallied all week. We're mm -hmm. right at this prior high. Um, we may close higher than the, the highest close over here, but the ultimate high, uh, we're right at the same level. So uh, very positive, though, we did uh, we did rally strongly this week after seeing that, uh, like I said, that oscillator break out of the squeeze. And we'll have to now watch to see how it handles the overhead supply here at these levels. Right. Great trade idea for this week. We're watching uh, watching financials and seeing how that plays out. Uh, certainly for those of you who, who trade on shorter terms, going to go charts works uh, across all time frames. So we could be looking at monthly charts or uh, a five minute chart and it's going to have uh, the same aspects to these tools. 
obviously looking very different. Uh, but let's move on from the financial story for a minute, Alex. Uh, what's yep. been driving, uh, remember at the, that first asset class heat map at the beginning, we saw commodities were really the only uh, asset class mm -hmm. in an overall go trend, uh, overall conditions uh, for commodities being very, very bullish. The oil story has been incredible. Uh, but let's look first at the sector group, the XLE, uh, U.S. energy sector, just to see how that's been performing this week as well. Yeah, like you said, it, the commodity space um, will always tend to thrive in a rising rate environment uh, as uh, commodities get expensive and, and we, we use them more like that. So mm -hmm. we are seeing the energy sector here really screaming away to new highs. We set a new high uh, right here a few bars ago, strong un uninterrupted blue bars telling us that this is the strongest of the go conditions. Mm -hmm. We're seeing the oscillator maintain these peaks on, on moves higher in price. Even now the oscillator has turned around and moved back higher mm -hmm. towards overbought conditions. So we're looking at a very positive uh, go trend in, in the energy sector. Certainly. Uh, and again, narrative machine working overtime, as uh, as Ben Hunt points out, one of our favorite authors. Uh, we're seeing a potential threat on the Ukrainian border. Is Russia going to invade? Uh, what about supply issues, uh, supply chain disruptions uh, due to the COVID pandemic? Doesn't uh, doesn't exactly matter what's influencing, but we're seeing crude oil futures above 90 bucks a barrel, and that's obviously driving uh, driving this trend in the energy sector. So, from a pure price and trend perspective, uh, strong go since the beginning of the year. This has been a great place for outperformance uh, within the equity markets. And uh, and Alex, let's let's look in uh, within the energy sector to a couple of the names that we were talking yeah. about in Monday's flight path. Uh, it's not a it's not a sprint, it's a marathon, right? That's right. M MRO, Marathon Oil, uh, catching the bid as well uh, within yeah, this energy yeah. sector. Yeah, I love that wordplay. Very, very clever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it has been a bit of a sprint, uh, really, for, for these companies in, in the oil and exploration space. Um, and like you said, since the beginning of the year, outperformance to be found in these companies uh, and continuing to to move higher, just a strong go trend. Looks a lot like that energy chart, but Marathon Oil making real gains here, sort of six dollars in the last several weeks, mm -hmm. um, up to uh, up to just above twenty, almost twenty twenty two dollars as a high. So, really strong moves uh, in Marathon. Yeah, absolutely. Another one that we were looking at was Devon Energy, a little more on the uh, exploration side of the of the supply chain. Fantastic. Still in yeah, a strong go trend, uh, seeing a lot of continuation icons right. as momentum continues to find support at zero, correct? Yeah, Devon's been very strong. And even in the middle of the chart here, the correction that we saw has been much uh, less dramatic for Devon, came mm -hmm. right back into a go trend. And then we see, like you said, a lot of these continuation icons. And that tells us that the oscillator is finding support as it should in a go trend. Now, remember, we did just talk about this. There is some slight bearish divergence as mm -hmm. price makes higher highs and the oscillator doesn't. But as long as the oscillator continues to find support at that zero, and even on the current bar, we are getting a go trend continuation icon here on Devon Energy. Absolutely. Now, uh, for all of our viewers and, and watchers, uh, they've got positions in their portfolio that they want to get out of. Uh, let's let's look at an example of something that uh, that was perhaps a really good sell before the major downslide, uh, uh, Facebook in particular, um, changing its name to Meta, really not helping it out, uh, <laughs> beat fourth quarter earnings, but despite uh, despite the outperformance uh, uh, against analyst estimates, um, they've traded down uh, big gaps. Uh, yeah, but Alex, yeah. let's let's just walk through this as a, a as an exercise for all of our viewers. How would you use go no go charts uh, to manage a position if you were holding Meta? Yeah, and we talked about it in the in the note this week on Monday from the longer term perspective and how we've can we we sh we've been able to see the deterioration uh, in the price for several weeks. So this is sort of a um, a nice example to talk about what we look for at each stage to tell us whether or not we're getting a bit worried about the, the trend uh, or the price conditions. So mm -hmm. this is the, the, the Facebook trend on a weekly chart. We were making new highs. We were staying in the go trend. Uh, and then we saw this correction against the trend and we saw the 
trend indicator painting those weaker aqua bars, mm -hmm. telling us that the, the trend conditions have weakened. But often, as we always see, this can be a buying opportunity. So when do we know whether that's the case or, or whether or not it's something a little bit more serious? And the first thing we're going to do then, as we look at this correction in price, we look to the oscillator and you can see how the oscillator broke below the zero line, sort of in the middle of this movement down with price. And it did so on heavy volume. So that was sort of a real indication that there's a lot of selling happening here, which shouldn't be the case in a strong go trend. Now, the next bit that we would look at here is what happens as price tries to rally again. And we see the trend conditions actually strengthen back to strong blue bars. But the oscillator is unable to get back above zero and is turned away by the zero line and rolls back over into negative territory. So that is a sign that the momentum now is uh, bearish and is staying bearish. And then you get the no-go flag on the trend indicator right as prices are moving sideways. It struggles to identify now which direction the trend will go. And we see a series of amber go fish bars. But at that time, the oscillator rides the zero line. So throughout this period, we can certainly be getting ourselves ready to exit our position or to look for further deterioration in price. And then, of course, as the oscillator finds resistance again at that zero line and rolls back into negative territory, we see that we get a no-go trend continuation icon. So really, mm -hmm. this deterioration has been in place now for a few months. And so, you know, of course, a surprise when the drop in price is that extreme, but mm -hmm. perhaps less of a surprise that the no-go trend is in place. Absolutely. So uh, conceptually, trend following investors, uh, when, we're, when we're in that period of weaker go conditions, the aqua bars, um, that's that's our decision point, right? Is this a hurry up and buy some more uh, as, as price consolidates uh, within trend? Or is this a place where we're watching that zero line to let us know if the oscillator if momentum has moved into oversold conditions. And obviously, uh, everything you just walked us through, Alex, what a great tutorial in how you might uh, use this to exit positions. Obviously, when the oscillator finds uh, the zero line to be resistance from below, and we've got heavy volume, that trend con uh, trend condition changing to no-go, is our uh, that's our absolute last line in the sand. But lots of opportunities to get out mm -hmm. of Facebook, Meta, uh, ahead of that uh, uh, drop based on their earnings reporting. Again, fundamentals matter. We just don't know when and by how much. Uh, so it's much easier as an investor to, uh, to find our positions through price action. And uh, thank you, Alex, for that you know, complete technical overview in a single clean chart. Um, and for those of you who like to play to the short side, uh, trend conditions in a no-go, uh, we see uh, the resurgence of momentum in the direction of the trend. Uh, we could pile into short positions as well uh, using the same exact uh, icons and uh, and weight of the evidence to see trends that continue meaningfully and persistent to the downside. All right, Alex, as we're wrapping up this week's show of Go No Go Charts, uh, we've learned how to sell and uh, short positions. Uh, something that's been a short all year long uh, has been Bitcoin. Uh, it seems like uh, we've had another uh, perhaps very short crypto winter. Uh, we'll, we're looking at the daily perspective on Bitcoin uh, measured in U.S. dollars, and we're starting to see a couple days of emerging go trends. Uh, so talk to us a little bit about this longer term no go since, uh, yeah. since Thanksgiving <clears throat> last year and, and what you're seeing in terms of a basing pattern for Bitcoin. Yeah, love the, the cleanness of the Bitcoin chart. Um, it really tends to play well technically. Uh, mm -hmm. And we got our no-go beginning here right around the 60,000 and being reinforced by no-go uh, trend continuation icons all the way down. Uh, and then on the ultimate low here, we've rallied and we see this time the oscillator significantly break through the zero line to the upside. Mm -hmm. um, and right after that happens, we get a couple of amber bars and then, of course, the first two go sessions being painted right here. Now, one of the things that we like and um, just uh, humor me, if you will, we have a minute or so, I think. But of course, one of the things that we like is the ability to to find um, traditional technical analysis 
when looking at go no go charts because of the uh, sort of the, the like you've said a number of times the fact that there's space to do it there's not too much on here mm -hmm. but you can see how this traditionally drawn technical uh, trend line was broken around the same sort of time as that oscillator uh, breaking this zero line and then that will really add to our opinion that this trend mm -hmm. might be now uh, getting reversed. And so then we get the amber go fish and then now we get the go. So interesting to see how that lined up with this traditional trend line. Uh, I am a, a junkie, Alex, of course, uh, <laughs> thinking about the uh, the news headlines with uh, uh, the cyber attack, uh, the, the Bitcoin that was stolen out of those accounts and uh, a couple of individuals facing potentially 20 years in, in prison for not stealing the Bitcoin, but uh, hoping to launder it. Um, somebody on Twitter recently posted that uh, the U.S. government holding nearly four billion in Bitcoin is, is a bullish condition. So, uh, again, never know when the narrative uh, machine is going to uh, get its exercise. But we can certainly see from a price perspective, investors uh, finding finding something worth value here in yeah. Bitcoin. Alex, thank you so much for spending your time with us today. Uh, walking through these go-no-go -no -go charts uh, from a top-down macro perspective and drilling into individual names. We'll see you back here next week for episode seven of the Go No Go show here on Stock Charts TV. If you're watching this on YouTube on demand, by all means, head over to StockChartsTV.com or uh, to whatever app store you like to frequent and download uh, the On Demand app as well. Thanks again, Alex. Take care, be well, stay safe, and we'll see you next week. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.